Pirates, 1922, by C. Lovett Fraser. Captain Edward England and his crew. Edward England went mate of a sloop that sailed out of Jamaica and was taken by Winter, a pirate, from whom he had the command of a sloop just before their settlement at Providence. The man was brave and good-natured, and far from being cruel as most of them are, and would not have committed such barbarous actions as he did, had not his comrades compelled him to it. He sailed to the coast of Africa after the island of Providence was inhabited by the English. In his passage, he took several ships, particularly the Cadogan Snow, belonging to Bristol, one Skinner Master, who was murdered by those very men who had formerly served under him upon a quarrel that happened between Skinner and them about their wages. He shipped them on board a man of war, from whence they deserted, and went on board a ship in the West Indies, where they were taken by a pirate and brought to New Providence, and then they sailed with Captain England, a pirate. As soon as Skinner came on board, he saw his old boat swain and said, Ah, Captain Skinner, it is you! I am much in your debt, and now I shall pay you in your own coin. These words put the captain in a panic fear, and indeed he had reason enough to be afraid, for they immediately seized him, bound him to the windlass, pelted him with glass bottles, afterwards whipped him about the deck, and then said, Because he had been a good master, he should have an easy death and so shot him through the head, the vessel and her cargo being given to Howell Davis. After this, England went into a harbor to clean his ship, and also fitted up the Peterborough, which he called the Victory. Then putting out to sea, they sailed for the East Indies and took Madagascar, by the way. From thence, after taking in water and provisions, they went for Malabar, in the Empire of the Mogul. Here they took several Indian vessels and one European, a Dutch ship, which they exchanged for one of their own, and then came back to Madagascar, where they sent several hands on shore to kill venison, and then resolved to seek out for the remains of Avery's crew. But returning without success, they being settled on the other side, they stayed no longer than till they had cleaned their ships, and then sailed to Juana. In the year 1720, the Bombay fleet consisted of four grabs, the London Chandois, and some other ships, carried a thousand men to bombard and batter Gapra, a fort belonging to Angria, on the Malabar coast, which they not being able to do, fell in with the pirates in their return to Bombay. But Captain Upton, the Commodore, having no orders, would not engage them, which so provoked the governor from missing so favorable an opportunity of cutting the pirates all off that he gave the command to Captain Macra with orders to fight them wherever he met with them. But the pirates proceeded to the southward and took a small ship out of Orincro Road with a Dutch and two Portuguese men on board, one of which they sent to the captain to inform him that if he would supply them with provisions and water, he should have his ship again. But the master would not agree to it. Thereupon they sent other persons ashore and swore he should be the last man they would give quarter to and so put directly for Lakadeva Island and arrived there in three days. But being informed by a Menchu, there was no anchor ground there. They went to the next island called Melincha, whence they were driven by a storm, leaving behind them a hundred people and all their water casks. But in a week's time, they regained the island, took their people on board, and filled the water casks. Provisions being scarce, they resolved to visit the Dutch at Cochin, and after three days' sail arrived off of Tillotery, where they took a small vessel belonging to Governor Adams, who, giving an account of Captain Macra's fitting out against them, put them into a grievous passion. Afterward, they arrived at Mauritius, where they refitted the victory, and then sailed the 5th of April for Madagascar, but called first at an island Mascarene, at which they found a Portuguese ship of 70 guns at anchor, disabled by a violent storms so that they easily became a prize to the pirates. She had on board the Conde Ericiera Viceroy of Gawa. Also, they found on board her in diamonds only to the value of four millions of dollars. They made the Viceroy a prisoner, but in consideration of his losses, accepted of a ransom of two thousand dollars and then sent him and his followers ashore. Learning that the Ostender was on the leeward of that island, they sailed and took her and sent her to Madagascar with news of their success, where they followed themselves soon after with 200 Mozambique people in the Portuguese ship.
When Taylor came with the Portuguese prize to Madagascar, they found that the Ostender had made his men drunk and seized his ship, which they carried to the Mozambique. From thence, the governor ordered her to Gao. But the pirates stayed and cleaned the Cassandra and divided very great plunder. Some, who thought they had got enough, stayed at Madagascar, and the rest, having no occasion for two ships, burnt the victory, she being leaky, and went on board the Cassandra under the command of Captain Taylor, designing to go for Cochin to dispose of his diamonds amongst his old friends, the Dutch, and also to avoid the dangers of the men of war that were in pursuit of them. But as he was preparing to sail and heard of four men of war coming after him, therefore he altered his mind and sailed for the main of Africa and put in at De La Goa. But the pirates were surprised in the evening with some shot from the shore. They took it for a desert shore, but it proved otherwise, for a few months before, the Dutch East India Company had settled 100 men upon it, who, not being supplied with necessaries, were reduced to about 16, whom Taylor, upon their humble petition, took aboard, and they all became pirates with him. Here they stayed about four months, careened in their ships, and left De La Goa the latter end of December. But not agreeing among themselves, they parted those who were weary of that sort of life, went on board the Portuguese prize, and sailed for Madagascar. The others went on board the Cassandra and sailed for the Spanish West Indies. The mermaid man of war, which was a convoy to some merchantmen about thirty leagues distance, would have gone to attack them had not the merchants whom he had the care of declared their protection was of more service than destroying the pirates, and so he was obliged to be content with only dispatching the news of it to Jamaica. This brought down the Lanston, though it was a day or two late, for they had just before surrendered with all their riches to the governor of Porto Bello, where they now live upon their spoils, saying others would have done as much had they had the same opportunity, swearing that whatever robberies they had committed, they are not the only rogues in the world, for that the South Sea did more mischief in one year than they were able to do in their whole lives, in reference to the South Sea bubble. Thank you for joining us today. Remember to like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications in your feed. See you next time on Pendant and Ring.